What's up, y'all? I am a gym under construction, and this is going to be a story time video. I just feel like since I have time to make a video while my daughter is napping, then I can just go ahead and do a story time for you guys. And I'm going to try to be in detail, but make it quick at the same time. So... Let's get into the video. Given that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. What's up, guys? Like I said before, I am a gym under construction. And this story time is basically going to tell you guys about the time where I just realized that I didn't really love me. Okay? I didn't really love myself. And this is also a part of the one of some of the reasons why I have depression. I fell into depression, insecurities. Basically, a part of the docu-series that is no longer a docu-series because I started a whole new channel. So, I guess it is still my docu-series, but I don't know. Anywho, let's continue on with the story time so this part of the series <laughs> this story time wasn't the worst story of the real breakdown in my depression it was a factor but i have sort of worked through this issue and continue to work and continuing to work through this issue so that this is not the actual breakdown of everything of why I've been in depression for heavily for the past I guess you could say three years um it all started in 2000 and I mean, I was on and off with floppy. So 2016, we're gonna just gonna take it back to 2016. Um, me and my husband, we were trying to get pregnant and I was having health issues as into why we couldn't get pregnant. As you guys know, or if you have followed my channel, um, my family vlogging channel, which was a TTC channel before I switched it over. Um, we were trying to conceive, of course, and um, I went through a IUI in September of 2016. I did get pregnant, but the pregnancy was not viable, so my levels never went up over a three, so it wasn't viable, and I ended up miscarrying in October, October 3rd of 2016. I was only like four weeks, four weeks and some change, like four in a day or something like that. I was very early on as the doctor told me I was barely pregnant at the time. So it was very early on. And, but that had been our fourth miscarriage. So it really took a toll on us. Um, fast forward, we um, had issues because I felt a type of way because I wasn't as close to my mother-in-law at the time. And I wanted him to be the one to fix that, you know, since that's his mom. But I couldn't wait on him. So fast forward, we went on a trip to Texas. I know you guys saw that. That's when I met his dad's side of the family in 2016 had a ball, came back, and I just wanted something new. We was about to go into 2017, and I just wanted to have a conversation with his mom so that we could be on the same page so I can get to know her, she can get to know me. I know she was, like, upset about how we got married, everything. That's a whole other story for a different day. Um, but we had a respectful conversation. I apologize if I came across a certain way to her, and... She apologized for basically the discretions that she had with me or what we had with each other. So basically, we let bygones be bygones and we wanted to start afresh for 2017. Um, 
So I thought everything between me and my husband was on the up and up. Um, but I don't know whether or not he was sh still struggling with the miscarriage or what it, whatever it was. We, we started to have marital problems. And like I said, I won't get into too much detail because at the same time, I'm still with my husband. So it's like, what's the point in like um, addressing everything? Um, but yeah, we were having marital problems. It was a question of my insecurities of trust, um, finances, love. Um, I was basically putting up with stuff that I shouldn't have because I love somebody and I just decided for myself enough was enough okay so we had a little breakdown and we didn't know where our relationship was heading but I knew I didn't want my marriage to end and I knew I loved him and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him so I told him let's go to therapy he said no so that caused a depression because I was like, okay, well, I'm still stuck in what's going on in our marriage. And I'm just like, I'm trying to fix it. But you're not trying to put in stuff to help us fix it. Um, and it was just more so of everything. Everybody wanted me to get over stuff. You know what I'm saying? But not acknowledging their part in the situation and not wanting to talk about it not wanting to talk anything out so me every time i had these feelings i would talk his head off talk his head off talk his head off talk his head off about the same thing and i knew he was tired but it's like i'm i was stuck i was stuck into the depression it was that bad i was stuck i could not believe my whole world was falling apart i was stuck um so in the midst of me going through and trying to heal to repair our relationship, we found out that I was pregnant June of 2017. Um, so I kind of like sucked it up, had to get my life together for like the longest freaking time. I couldn't really deal with my emotions because I didn't want to cry um, because I was pregnant. Fast forward, pregnancy was very stressful. Um, that's a different whole situation a whole another story um a little bit my husband made it stressful only because when I first found out I was pregnant I was constantly sick I was lazy I you know in a depression I don't even know if he realized I was in a depression he didn't know how to deal with my mood swings he didn't know how to deal with just me being depressed in general slouching and not wanting to clean I want to cook and it was like he felt like well, I'm at work all day. You're on leave from work because they put me out of work um, June, I mean, July of 2017. So for about a week, I was off, not getting paid or nothing so I can get my doctors and stuff, appointments, stuff straight. And for that week, we argued a lot. Oh my God, I was like five weeks pregnant. And this was in June, I was like five weeks pregnant. Um, four or five weeks pregnant at the time. And I was just like, it's too much stuff going on behind the scenes and I'm trying to figure it all out. And I'm trying to tell him like, look, I'm pregnant. He felt like I was using pregnancy as an excuse, but in reality, y'all, I was sick, dog sick. Couldn't get out of bed sick, headache sick. Until, you know, like he finally realized like, okay, she not doing well or you know, then I started, when I got my energy level back, I did try to do stuff. But it, and it also, in my mind, it's like, you're not trying to do nothing to help our relationship. So I really don't want to do anything to help you feel comfortable. That's my mindset. I was in a messed up state. I was in a dark space. That was one of the dark. I feel like I wanted my baby so bad, but I swear that was the most darkest time of my life my whole entire pregnancy i thought it was going to be blissful not stressful and everything it was the worst i was like always snapping off crying depressed i i was a mess that was the darkest space for me i had my daughter in 2018 february 20th that was the most happiest day of my life but at the same time <laughs> drama was going on behind the scenes so it's like 
Are you really serious? So now I can't enjoy the birth of my child. Like, really. Me and hubby was still going through what we were going through. And I just had to admit to him, like, look, I don't trust you. I don't trust that you have my best interest at heart. I don't feel like you consider my feelings. I don't feel like you take me seriously. And at this point, I kind of felt like no one took me seriously. But most importantly, it only mattered that, damn, if nobody else take me seriously, I need you to take me seriously. You're the one I sleep at night with. You're the one I hold on to. You you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know where the root came from of why I felt the way that I feel. But I know the root now. I know the root. Um, but... I didn't know the root of why I just wanted him to address stuff or why I wanted to fix because I didn't want to be sour. So a lot of you not. We had our good times throughout the year of 2018. And we most definitely had our bad when my little flare ups came up or I brought up the situation at hand. And I was just like, well, what are we going to do? Because I need to know you got my back. I need to know that you're here for me. I need to hear you say like, not even just hear you say, but I want to know. And, you know, and I would just keep on telling him how I feel. But in his mind, it's like, I'm going to work. I haven't left you yet. I'm providing this money. But to me, it's like monetary is not everything. I felt like the time that we needed wasn't put in because he was always at work. We needed the money, yes. But at the same time, I wanted my husband. I wanted him to be at home. Like, was that all hard to ask for? I wanted my husband to be at home. Um, But then slowly but surely, I started back getting my oomph. Wanted to do overtime and all that. So... Over the years of 2018 and 2019, like I said, we still had our ups and downs from the situation of 2017. And um, but we had a child. But I feel like in all of it, all in all, I feel like we lost ourselves in in having our baby. I feel like after we had her, we didn't put in the time for me and him in our relationship to actually get back to where we were. OK, and I was upset because I'm like, our whole relationship has changed. This is not how it used to be. And I was upset because I never wanted to say that. Like, I wanted everything to always stay the same. And so I struggled with trying to adjust to new mommy life and also making sure my husband was good. I always put mommy life here and him was like you know down here then this raised more and then I didn't know how to balance so and then he wasn't even trying either so I felt like it was a tug of war type situation and I felt like I was trying but I was like you're not trying hard enough you're not doing this you're not doing that and then I didn't even look at myself like okay what are you not doing I fell so deep into my depression, y'all. He was working, cleaning, helping me cook. Only thing I was really doing was cooking. I wasn't cleaning. I was lounging. Like, sorry. Yeah. I had fell so far. And I never spoke on it. Um, But we're doing fine now. We... This year, we made a promise to each other. Well, at the end of 2019, we made a promise to each other. We're going to travel more, spend more time together, not lose ourselves. If there's an issue, we're going to talk it out, not argue, not nothing. We're basically now, I feel like I have my best friend back. So, I feel like now I have my best friend back. And I am happy with where things are right now. Um, so I'm just living for today and, um, just going to live in every moment that I have with him. And I'm going to continue to learn from the experiences that we have had together as a couple. 
and I'm going to try to be better to myself and to him, but also stand by what I believe in and not just accept anything. You know what I mean? Like, I know my worth now. So, so with that being said, that was the story time of a breakdown with me and my husband that caused me to go into a really bad depression and it was a lot going on in those span of years. Now I need to tell you guys the story time and the domino effect of after the situation happened, what happened that drove me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, um, driving me deeper into the depression that I couldn't focus on my household. So I will talk to you guys later. And again, it was your girl, a gym. Well, my name is Jamika, by the way, <laughs> aka a gym under construction. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you.